So I'm going to do my first game review, and I have to ask myself, what kind of reviewer do I want to be? I can review games I don't like and be angry. Echo the tides of time. More like echo the turds of time. This game should die in a burn fire. No, I really don't dislike any game enough to do that. Or, I can only review games that I loved, but I think didn't receive a fair shot. Today on Mike B's Hidden Secrets, I want to talk about a very underappreciated and undervalued game for the Nintendo 64. Quest 64, in my opinion, probably the best RPG on the N64. Let me give you a little history about this game. No, there's already people doing that, and probably doing a better job than I ever could. What was that sound? Hmm. I think... I'm just gonna have to be myself. Keep courage in Alpha Zones. I love this game growing up. This is definitely the kind of review I want to do. <laughs>
you'll mainly do some basic platforming and farming for cash. Okay, I want you to stop right there. This is where a lot of people are automatically going to dismiss Keep Courage in the overworld. But I want you to take a different approach to it. While the overworld is nothing earth shattering in Keith Courage, it's not meant to be, and here's why. The truth is, I've never really considered the overworld stages in Keith Courage to be actually part of the levels. I looked at them more in the lines of a role playing game where basically the overworld was an opportunity for you to basically build up your levels, farm cash, and pick up better inventory. In a game like Zelda 2 The Adventures of Link, while the dungeon stages are fantastic, the overworld is actually pretty plain. And in classic RPGs like Dragon Warrior, the overworld is just a chance for you to grind levels. The actual most important thing to do in the overworld is to improve your weapons for the underworld. And you do this by farming your cash and going to the weapons merchant and buying the various brave swords throughout the game. It's at this point in the game where you transfer into your giant mech, very similar to what you'd see in Robotech, and I actually always thought of Voltron when I saw this. And you go into the underworld stage, and this is where the game really kicks ass. Like I said earlier, I consider, to be, I consider the underworld stage to be the dungeons of the game. Man, this is just so much fun. You're running around as a giant ninja mech and just destroying everything in front of you. Well, it's not all sunshine and roses. Sometimes there's some hard to see drops that you gotta make that end up with you jumping on the spikes and an instant death. Yeah, when you're playing in the underworld sections, or the dungeons as I call them, there are absolutely some cheap deaths. But it's all about memorization. I mean, it's not like this would be the first game that was great but had cheap deaths. I mean, I can think of some classic NES titles that people still talk about today that had cheap deaths as well. At least in this game, when you get hit, you don't bounce backwards. Last but not least is probably my favorite part of Key Courage and Alpha Zones. And that's the boss battles. Uh, the graphics in this game I haven't talked about much, but they're beautiful and they're definitely personified in the boss battles. Each boss battle has its own unique pattern that's easy enough to learn, and most bosses can be defeated simply by walking up to them and slashing away repeatedly. That is, all except for the last boss, who can be very challenging. There is, however, a very uh, easy way to beat him, and it's a debug, a debug pattern. Instead of jumping directly down into the pit as you normally would, you slide to the side and then move in horizontally, which will basically paralyze the boss, and you can defeat him very, very easily. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick look back at one of my favorite games of all time growing up for the TurboGrafx-16, Keith Courage and Alpha Zones. Um, you may still not want to play this game after watching this review, and that's fine. I mean, realistically, my opinion on games is they're only as good as they are to you and your enjoyment in them. So guys, thank you very much. This is Michael B. The Game Genie, and I'll talk to you next time.